Good afternoon, I'm Bill Anderson, coming live from the Costa del Sol. Absolutely delighted today to, to have, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be rude here, but say a young guest on, because a, a lot of our guests are, are retired people or, or, or people who've been here and, 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 and are working <laughs> in business. Antonia Pipaluk Stanke. Antonia, welcome to Expat Radio. Thank you so much. It's absolutely delightful to have you. Um, now, I, I, sh I should say your name alone sounds like a mix of three cultures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> yes, the, the, the Antonia bit sounds very Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Pipaluk, it, it's not Finnish, is it? I think it's Greenlandish. Oh, yeah. Greenlandish. Ah, yeah. Um, right. I was supposed to be called that as my first name, but my grandmother didn't want it. So. Ah, <laughs> yeah. right. So you, you would have just been Pippa then, yeah? Yeah, I actually call myself Pippa a lot. Right. Antonia is such a big mouthful for a lot of people. And, and um, in, in reality, you, you were born in Copenhagen? Yes, I was, yeah. Yeah, so you're Danish. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say, uh, for, the, for the, the short conversations that we've had, you speak absolutely superb English. Have, have, have you lived so in the UK at all? Yeah, I, uh, I studied in London musical theatre for right. three years, so, yeah. Right. Yeah, and we're, we're going to come on to, you know, um, your, uh, your professional career, but be, mm -hmm. because, you know, um, I, 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 I wouldn't be rude enough to ask your age, but you've you've done a lot of things already, and and uh, you really are very much in the arts and entertainments business, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I mean, I kind of grew up in that household. Both my mom and my grandmother were dancers, so right. I kind of I was always listening to music and always dancing at home, and so it kind of just came naturally. Um, so yeah, I mean, but I always sung as well, and I always wanted to act, and so it just became musical theatre where I could combine all that. Right. So, so you did you did that sort of professional training in London, yeah? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and how how was that? I, I I guess that was your first major move away from home, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very very uh, scary because I was eighteen and I'd never lived anywhere other than my parents house right so I had to move to London and I had to move in with two uh two flatmates and and yeah basically learn everything from new and start from on the school there and yeah so that was a lot to take in but it was really fun and I learned a lot and I grew a lot and um yeah. learned, uh, met a lot of wonderful people so yeah yeah so how how, how was it was it a degree you did or how, how, how does that work how was that yeah, there was um there was a course of one year or two years, and I did the two year course. Right. Um, you could either take just the acting or musical theater course, and I took the musical theater. So we had jazz and ballet and tap and singing and acting, and a lot of amazing teachers from West End, and we also had teachers coming from Broadway to teach us. So, yeah, that was intense and uh, yeah. very hard as well because there was also you know. We did workshops and musicals while we were at the school, so there was a lot to learn from a very newbie, eighteen-year-old Antonia. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, is it anything like the old television series Fame? Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's. <laughs> um, I think a lot of my friends asked this. They were like, "Oh my God, does everyone just run around singing all the time?" And I'm like, "Kind of. Yeah. I mean, we do." Yeah, because everyone loves, it. that's what we lived for. But I mean, obviously, it was professional while we were in class. But yeah. the lunch breaks and everything, of course, we all whipped out guitars and sang and stuff. So that was a little fame-ish, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you call that studying, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was a good experience for you. Uh, it it was, sounds absolutely. like it. Yeah. And, and you, you were able to take part in, in actual performances uh, during your time there. Yeah, we did that while we were at school. We did um, musicals as Matilda, and we did our end of your musical was Into the Woods. So, so that was uh, that was fun. We got to learn everything about behind the stage as well as on stage, and how everything worked, and how we are supposed to act in the industry and everything. So, yeah, right. it was uh, very teachable. Yeah, yeah, and and you you didn't stay on in London after you finished your your course. Um, I stayed on for about another year. I had to move places. I lived in Islington to start with, and I moved a little bit further away. Um, 
But then I got a job in Denmark, an acting job in Hamlet. And so I kind of had to move back to because I couldn't really just go back and forth from London to Denmark. Right, sure. Yeah. So so I moved back to Denmark for that. And then because of that job, I met a lot of actors and and people in that industry and kind of got jobs from there. So I, yeah, I just decided to stay in Denmark after that. So, so what, what was it, Hamlet, uh, as in you know the, the Shakespeare the Shakespearean version, or what, what was it something that was adapted? It was. We actually were very lucky. We were able to do it at the the actual castle, the Cornwall Castle, right, um, where it's set. So, uh, yeah, yeah. so we wore the dresses, but it was a little bit more interactive. So when people came to visit the castle, they would watch us in there and watch us do the scenes. Um, so that was definitely interesting because people didn't necessarily know that we were there, and then all of a sudden we'd pop out and <laughs> uh, be a scene from Hamlet. So, right. yeah. So, uh, so we got to uh, surprise a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, and and you, you didn't get to say the line of something rotten in Denmark, no? Um, I think Hamlet says that. Yes. <laughs> say that. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, th- th- that was your back in 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 Denmark for for your starring role in Hamlet um and but but you you I mean I I've known your mum for a number of years uh who who is d- down here um in on the Costa del Sol yeah. um I I guess you were coming back and forward for holidays and things yeah yeah absolutely ever since she moved here I came every summer I couldn't really go that much because I have to have time off work but yeah I've been here every summer for like six seven years like that yeah yeah and and you know uh well initially as a tourist what what was what was your impression of of this part of Spain um I mean definitely I mean I would go obviously to see her and also get the heat but my my biggest impression here is that people don't (laughs) Stress. <laughs> they take things very like oh manana manana you know like everyone's very like yeah you know we don't we don't stress we'll take things calmly and slowly and in Denmark everything is so high paced all the time and you have to have something going and you have to always be on the move so it's it's yeah. kind of very different vibe here for that yeah I I, I had to to accompany a, a couple to the the town hall this morning up in in uh, Mika's village and uh, I was driving over, and I, I said I'd meet them about twenty past for for a, a half past appointment. Yeah. And, and I, I'm I'm driving up, uh, going into the car park, and go, oh my god, it's nineteen minutes past, you know, and I, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to be it's going to be twenty two minutes by the time I get up there, mm-hmm. uh, which, which is you know uh, I think it's in my genes, you know. Yeah. And and uh, we we get into the town hall. Uh, down like minus three floors to to the department that we were going to to see there, and I'm looking at my my phone and going, twenty nine minutes past, we're on time. Yeah. And the person that we're going to see came strolling in about five minutes later, saying, "Ah, sorry, I'm yeah. late." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so weird because I'm like half an hour early for everything, and then people come like thirty minutes late here, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, we'll just take it chill." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, listen, Antonia, I, I've been here 22 years. And I, I've yeah. worked in Spanish companies. I've worked in a lot of different uh, settings, and I've never got used to it. No, no. Uh, I, I, I think it must be genetic, you know, that... that uh, yeah. In fact, they sometimes say down here, you know, they give a time and they say, La hora inglesa, the English mm-hmm. hour, which means <laughs> not... It's, <laughs> It's it's not half an hour later. It, it's 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 that time, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then well, you, that's good. I mean, yeah. yeah. But it you you don't find Laura Inglesa very often down here. Yeah. Everything starts when everybody gets there, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's good and bad. I think like so. Uh, I suppose it depends on on the situation, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's also just going to auditions as much as I have. It's also like if you took the train that went there and got there for the time that you were supposed to be there, you would be late. Yes. So you have to take two trains before. And so I'm just, I've grown up with that, you know, so this yeah. is so different. Yeah. And, you know, it's probably worth mentioning that, um, you know, on the part of the coast that we are on, which is 
uh, you know, we're, we're uh, I don't know, almost almost halfway between Malaga and Marbella, yeah. a um, little bit closer to Marbella, perhaps. But uh, actually, public transport is not that easy, is it? No, no. It's the same with buses. I mean, they say a time, but it's like, well, we'll be there when we'll be there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, there are so many areas that um, if they are covered by public transport, you know, it's like twice a day, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we we, um, we were going into Malaga a couple of weeks ago and, and I hate driving in Malaga. So I, I've, I've lived yeah. in the countryside for 20 years and the thought of driving my car into Malaga City yeah. just fills me with dread. So yeah. we we thought well you know we'll, we'll take the the car into Fuengirola which is just about fifteen minute drive we'll catch mm. the train there, but you know we we could have been there to Malaga and back by the time we arrived in Malaga on the train yeah. you know it yeah just exactly t- takes yeah. forever doesn't it yeah yeah no that's what we usually did we would also like go to Fuengirola and then take the train because Malaga is just insane by car but yeah yeah yeah. There's no other way, really. I mean, yeah. no, but but it, it it is you know it, it's I think it's just worth mentioning that for for people you know thinking about coming to the Costa del Sol, if you want to do traveling, you know you need to plan your travel so yeah. well if it's going mm-hmm. to be by public transport, yeah. and and you know they they want us to reduce the amount of cars that we're using and things like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, if you want to get somewhere in a reasonable time, uh, you know, uh, pu- public transport is just about impossible. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I agree. And, and, and you're carless at the moment, aren't you? I'm carless and driver's license. Oh, and driver's license less. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, I need to get that sorted because <clears throat> Copenhagen is not a driving city. It's a bike right. city. Right, of so, course. Um, yeah. So, but uh, and I also, I mean, my mom has a driver's license, so I've driven with her around. But it just, I feel like people drive insane here compared to Copenhagen. They mm-hmm. kind of make up their own rules, and the the signs on the street, I'm like, doesn't even make sense to me, really. So, uh, so that's uh, going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I think that the well, there are two things that people complain about down here. Um, one of them is that people don't use indicators. No. <laughs> yes. uh, and I, I just can only assume it's because they know where they're going. So, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and nobody else needs to know. Nobody else needs to know. You just keep out the way. Yeah. Uh, and the, the other thing is roundabouts. Yeah, there's so many of them as well. There, well, actually, in, in, in Mijas, um, we only have, I think, Two sets of traffic lights in 150 square kilometers of of, uh, of council area, so really? th- there are only two sets of traffic lights, yeah. and so everything is done by roundabouts. Yeah, and yeah. people drive like absolute nutters around roundabouts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they they either drive like their um, you know Alonso in 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 uh, a sports car, uh, <laughs> going around on two wheels, and that includes lorries sometimes. Um, or they they drive as as if they're the only person on the roundabout, and they just swap from lane to lane, and then yeah. cut people off. You know, before they go. It's, it's great fun. No, it, it is, and I'm actually surprised there aren't more like accidents here. But I guess people are just very aware and awake in traffic because wow, I mean, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and I, I guess you know you're saying in, in Copenhagen uh, it it's more normal to get around by bike, yeah. Yeah, I mean people do drive crazy by bikes as well, but that's like that's easier to control, I feel like, yeah. than cars. So yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's like I have a son who who lives in in Tokyo, yeah, and he's oh. he's been there since his uh, or mid twenties, um, and he doesn't have a driver's license. No, because in 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 Tokyo, you you have to before you can buy a car, you have to demonstrate that you have you own a parking space. Really? Yeah, uh, and apparently, you know, um, parking spaces cost as much as a small house. You know? Oh my god! Uh, and and they do have very good public transport. So he, he yeah. should, he's just never bothered to learn to drive. He, he started no, when he was studying in the UK. 
and and eventually moved moved to to Japan. And he said it's it's just not worth it, you know. No, 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 no. I will agree. I mean, I've been to Tokyo once, and and the public systems are insane. I mean, they're so good. Yeah. There's never any delays, and it is intense because there's so many people, and you get sure. pushed into the wagons. But um, it does work. So. Yeah. Well, I I I think. Uh, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think the population of Tokyo is about 38 million. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Which, which you 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 can't you can't really visualize that no. many people living. It's not a small area. I mean, Tokyo must be no, of course not, massive. Yeah. But you know, it, it, it's still it's still a defined area, uh, and and the idea of thirty eight million people living there is, is, is kind of mind blowing, isn't it? It's insane, especially coming from from Denmark, yeah. which is tiny. Yeah. So, yeah. So you 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 found when you were coming down here on holiday, you found that people seemed to be pretty kind of laid back, and mm. uh, you know, uh, uh, they say a lot, tranquilo, you know, relax, yeah. relax, yeah, yeah. yeah. Calm down, but but yeah. did, did that suit you and your uh, your you know, your way of being? No, <laughs> it didn't. No, not really. No, I think I got that from my mom. We're very fast paced and very like, no, it has to happen now or sooner rather than later. Right. So it gets a little frustrating sometimes, but I I think it's also good for me because I think it is good to to sort of relax back into like you know what, it doesn't have to happen just the way that I'm supposed to make it happen right now. So, sure. yeah. So I think it's good to sort of lean back, not with everything, but yeah, to yeah. breathe a little bit more. Mm. Sure. So that, that that was one impression of, of, of coming down here. But what were your other impressions of, of, of I'm going to say, I can't say Spain, because the Costa del Sol is not really Spain. No. No, not not really. If if you want real Spain, you you travel two hours inland to a small mm. town, yeah, uh, and and there you've got real Spain. Yeah. But you know, in Mijas alone, we have one third of the population uh, who are foreigners. Yeah, exactly. It's become very touristy. Yeah. Um. I, I, well, the, the, these are residents. These are people oh, yeah. who live here. So yeah. we, we've got a third of the population foreigners. So it it's very international down here compared to some of of the uh, you know you don't actually have to go very far inland um, yeah. to 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 come across. Uh, you know, I I worked inland for a couple of uh, for about six months. It was only two hours drive. Uh, yeah. Nice little town, twenty five thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the, the, my first day walking down the street, these three old men stopped and looked at me like. You're not from here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, like you so, tell. so in 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 that sense, uh, and yeah, it's a very touristy area. So uh, a lot of the the services are geared towards the tourist. Yeah. Uh, you know, the restaurants, the activities, the nightclubs and bars, and 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 things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. uh, th that's why it, w w when I say it's not real Spain, uh, that that's probably what I mean by that. But yeah. how, how does that feel to you? You 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 you're a young woman. Um, I I guess that kind of appeals in some ways. Yeah, I mean, when I first started coming here, my mom didn't live here. Yeah. She lived in uh, Cohen. All right. Which so, and I don't know. That was years ago, so I don't know how much it's changed. But that was definitely different from here because, like you said, that was a little bit more like. A smaller community, more inland and stuff. So there wasn't a lot of tourists. There wasn't a lot of foreigners there. Um, but but yeah, this has become a, a more, more. I don't know. Yeah, like you said. But I don't know. I think people are very colorful, not just in clothing, but just in like you know the way of being. I think Denmark also because our weather is so gray that I think people become a little bit more. I don't know. Inward, inwarded, you know, in, yeah. in regards to here, people f feel, at least to me, very open and helpful. And even if a lot of them don't speak that much English, they're always like, they're very much there to help a lot of the time. So, sure. yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, to, to, to say that, that in, in, in Mijas, where, where, where we are, um, there's 125 nationalities or, mm -hmm. or around wow. that, maybe even more than that now. Um, pe people, people do generally get on pretty well together, and um, I've, yeah. I've never experienced, uh, I've never experienced racism 
from no. um, you know from the people who live here. The institutions in Spain are a bit funny. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the the whole bureaucratic system and things do kind of keep foreigners out. You know, right. it's it's very hard for foreigners to get into certain um, professions, for example, um, down yeah. here, because yeah. it, it really is very protected for the Spaniards. But um, you know, just just around and about, I I, I find fe people are are very very friendly and very accepting. Yeah, absolutely. I get the I get the same impression, and and even like like I said, if they don't speak a lot of English, it's just you still have that communication there. Where yeah. I think. Danish people tend to maybe be a little bit more closed off, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I think maybe a, a little bit more introverted. I think the Northern Europeans yeah. generally tend to be a bit more introverted. Yeah, a bit more reserved, at least. Yeah, yes. yeah. And and you you said that you're, you're frantically trying to um, get some Spanish as well just now, Antonia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm trying. I'm I'm on Duolingo. I mean, that's not gonna help that much but at least i've learned how to say i'm sick and eating an apple and stuff so yeah. right yeah yeah well, well what you need is a spanish boyfriend yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and if, if, if you would like to apply for that post con oh. con <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't going to give your phone number out there, Antonia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, um, you, you haven't actually, you, you've made the move down here um, very recently, isn't it? Yeah, six weeks ago. Six yeah. weeks ago. And, um, you know, it's, it's very impressive that you've already actually um, got yourself a contract. Yeah, well, almost. I mean, I, I have had my first trial day as a singer, so right. that's good. And they, I have been promised a contract, so yeah, yeah. don't want to jinx it too much. But I mean, yeah, that's that's very nice. That's very good because a lot of the jobs for singers are hard to come by in the summer, you know. So yeah, yeah it, it, it is, and and uh, you know, contracts. If if you can get a contract down here, it, it's like gold dust. <laughs> yeah, be, because so, so many people have to be uh, self-employed, yeah, uh, and and then you know fi find work uh, as uh, as a self-employed person, and mm. being self-employed down here, I think, is mm. one of the most expensive areas in Europe, or yeah, expensive insane. countries in Europe. Uh, I, I think I'm I, I'm I'm being um, uh, un understated here. I think uh, it's about three hundred to three hundred and twenty euros a month. To be yeah. self-employed, yeah, regardless of how much money you make, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. That's so wild. Yeah. So if if you if you have if you have a quiet month, you know, which can certainly happen in the kind of uh, well in, in any industry, but in the kind of industry that you're working in, uh, mm -hmm. it can happen that things uh, go quiet for a month. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've still got to pay your your three hundred and twenty euros. Yeah, um, uh, which is just incredible. I know. My mom told me about that, and it was just like, "What? What do you do?" Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's why I'm saying, if and we'll keep our fingers crossed for you, if <laughs> um, the, the the contract comes through, they are like gold dust down here, and yeah. it also having a contract, and you know, you, you're a European citizen, so it, it's much easier for you in, in that respect. Yeah. But it also gets you, um, how would we say, into the system. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you, you get your, your health cover, you're, right. you're starting to, to, to pay for your, your social security and, and, and all of these yeah. kind of things. Yeah. So uh, we, we shall keep our fingers crossed for you there, um, and, Antonia. Now, you. We're, we're going to take a short break in just a moment. When we come back, uh, I want to talk a bit more ab about you, the, the whole arts and entertainment side of your life because you, you've got yeah. other little secrets hidden down there as well. <laughs> uh, and no, I haven't talked to your mum. No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we are going to have, I've, I've got a, a note here, Sia and Kylie Minogue dance alone. You can sing along to it if you wish, Antonio. Um, you and I. You're listening to Expat Radio, binning out across France and around the world. Welcome back. I'm Bill Anderson, coming live from the Costa del Sol. 
uh, with my guest today. Delighted to have you, Antonia Pippeluk Stanke from yes. Denmark. Recently, <laughs> six weeks ago, moved to Spain. Um, was it a big sort of decision for you to, to move down here, Antonia? Um, well, yes and no, because it's something I've thought about doing for years. I uh -huh. I love Copenhagen, but I'm also, I found out that I get sick of being in the same place for way too long. Right. So, um, so I thought about it for a lot of years and then like not getting too personal, but for the last couple of years, I've been struggling a lot mentally. And so I think things just built up where I was like, you know what? I don't have that much to lose anymore, so let me just take that leap and right. and go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but but you, you know, the, the, the dealing with the mental demons is something that people in the arts industry, I think, go through, because yeah. I think to be successful in in the, the whole arts industry, whether you're a writer or, or an actor or, or whatever it is, mm. um, you, you you can't do that without having a level of sensitivity no no uh, and, and i i i think many many people who who you know go, go off the, then this path uh, career wise mm. do have times where um uh you know they, they find it difficult just, just to cope with day-to-day -day life yeah yeah, um, absolutely. yeah. because I, I think they are more sensitive mm. yeah yeah i yeah i agree i mean i'm very I'm very much an empath, so it's it's cursing and a blessing in a lot of ways. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, now, w w when you were in Denmark, uh, you, you also taught something else, didn't you? Yes, I taught ballet. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I, 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 know, I know Dave is a bit of a ballet dancer. <laughs> I, I, I have seen him in his tights. Oh yeah, it's not it's not a pretty sight, but um, <laughs> he's going to come on in a minute. He has to respond to that one, but 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 it 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 is something I I would guess that you you have to start at a young age, no? Yeah, I mean, my mom had the ballet school, so and she's been a professional ballet dancer. So when she opened it, I was around seven, and it was just I mean, I'd always danced, and right. I was like, okay, I always was moving. So I just, it was so natural to just start doing that. And then I went to her school for about 16 years to kind of learn the dance and learn ballet. And then I got my degree in London and I got back from London and then she sold the school and I started teaching there for about seven years after that. So, right. Yeah. Uh, was it mainly, um, you know, children or did, did you have adults coming to that sort of thing? Well, the whole school we had from four-year-olds to about 80-year-olds. <laughs> really? Um, so, and I had the four-year-olds to about 25th-year-olds, 25-year-olds. Right. So, um, yeah, so I had a, a big range and I was in charge of shows and and auditions and choreographies and a lot of things as well. So, yeah. 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 I, I want to know, right, I want to know, you know when belly dancers get up on the toes? Mm -hmm. How on earth do you not break your feet doing that? Well, we don't start off with doing that. <laughs> I know the, all the little girls come in and they're like, we want to stand on our toes, but we don't do that when we're four years old. So you have to have strong ankles. You have to build up your your feet and your strength. Um, and it is tough, but we don't break our toes just standing on them because oh. we build up that whole strength. Yes, yeah, me to death. I mean, I get, my ankles are no good with football now with my, with my uh, injuries I've had over the years, but when you see Pete, when you see this ballet on stage and you see them get up on the toes like that, you think, "How on earth?" The yeah. Feet. And yeah. then see the state of the feet. Some of these dancers with the careers that they've had, when they when they take the shoes off and you see the feet, the feet are, a, you know, you think, "Oh God." Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it, it's very like different from person to person. My feet have never been bad, um, and we don't actually we we only stand on two toes actually. Is it? <laughs> so, yeah, because it's, you know, the big toe and the, the toe next to it. What's it called? The second toe. <laughs> second toe, yeah, um, because that's the two main ones. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I've had, like, 
I've never had bloody feet or anything after it. I've had like patches and stuff on my feet, so it's it wasn't like a. But of course, sometimes it hurts, and and you've had long shows where you know your feet are dead afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's real. So you'll be trying that tonight, Bill, won't you? When you're getting in bed with you tonight. I, I I I will. I mean, I can give you a twirl just now if you wish. Yeah. Yeah. How on earth is that going to work on radio? Do we have to do subtitles? Wait, 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 wait a minute, Dave. If I can do wine tasting on radios, I can do Bali on the radio. Oh, yeah. oh right? okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, the wine tasting's a bit, you get, at least you get it. well, I don't know. You, you get the fitness fitness out of the ballet, but the, the wine tasting, my God, you look like you were belly dancing when you walked out of Hansi's place when you were, <laughs> when you were going. <laughs> now, both at the same time, that's something. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, what, what, what wine wine tasting while wearing a tutu? Yes, yeah, and twirling. <laughs> yeah. Now you're worrying me. That's it. You were wearing a tutu while you were doing that. So, to to, to get back to the serious stuff, <laughs> right? So you 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 were teaching ballet for a number of years. Yes. I I, I would guess, um, Antonia, and I, I'm not putting words into your mouth here. But, uh, you know, it, it's like a lot of teaching. Sometimes you just feel you need a break from it. Did, did, it yeah. did it feel that way for you? I mean, I loved it. I really, really loved doing choreographies, especially because I felt like I could so be creative with that. And a lot of the kids that I had was, I mean, I, I taught there for seven years, so I watched them grow up and sure. become adults and watch them grow into who they were so it became very personal but also like you said you know with the whole creativity thing sometimes it was forced because sometimes you had to do it you know for a show or and it wasn't necessarily like oh I feel creative so I'm going to do something now it was like you have right. to do it yes. I have to put steps together yeah. and that became harder and harder and so at a certain point you're just like I, I can't be creative anymore I can't do the same thing over and over and because I also want to be pleased with the work I do and not just do whatever work so yeah yeah and and you, you don't want people going to shows and thinking oh yeah. it, it's, it's, it's more of the same you know no no I want to I want to go out with a bang you know not with like a, oh really that was her last show mm. right so, yeah. yeah. So it, it it was it was time for a break anyway from that yeah 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 absolutely. So on on your 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 singing career, I, well, no, I want to ask you something else first. We'll come back to the singing in a moment. What what, what what is you know? Do you have a favorite genre within the whole arts field? You know, is it your <laughs> dancing? Is it acting? Uh, is is it singing? And you know, if if you could just if you had to choose one of them, <laughs> which, which 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 direction would you go in? Oh god, I knew this question was coming. <laughs> um, oh, it's so hard. I feel like it's Sophie's choice because I've been asked this so many times. And it really just depends on the day, I feel, because a lot of days I'm like, oh, I don't want to dance today. I don't feel like it. And I'll just sing. And other days it's different. And other days I'm like, I love this monologue. I'll do this scene. But I don't know. I don't know. It has to be between singing and dancing acting i love as well but that just that comes naturally in the singing and dancing i right, think sure. so so i don't know i can't pick i can't no okay yeah. no but but that, that that's that's good but because you know i i have seen people down here uh you know and and what they say is i'm a singer that that's right. it i'm a singer yeah. and and when you live in in this area the worst thing that you can be is just a person that only does one thing. Mm, yeah. Because it really limits your opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think having a passion for more than one thing potentially, um, mm. you know, opens up more doors to you. Yeah. I think it's, I think, honestly, I, th <laughs> I think I have a passion for too many creative things. Sometimes it's like overwhelming. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, I want to paint. I want to do piano and I'll start all these projects. You uh -huh. know, so, do, do, yeah. do you play any instruments? I used to. I, uh, I have started piano slowly, but I used to play the violin and the flute in school. Right. So we had to have those incorporated. Um, but yeah, no, I wish I kind of stuck with that a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's. Um, I, I've known people who who start off with with you know musical instruments and then go into to other areas, 
But I, I think yet again, um, you know, I've known adults who tried to take up instruments. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. Um, it always sounds like a, a sort of um, form of torture listening to them. <laughs> You know, oh, okay. uh, that, <laughs> yeah. that, 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 you know, I, I, I think it probably becomes just harder, yeah. uh, you know, either because of other demands that we have on us as, mm -hmm. as adults to, to really become proficient at an instrument. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I'm also, I'm very much a person that's like, if it's not perfect on the first try, I'm like, well, then I don't want to do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's been very frustrating because my piano teacher who's a good friend of mine. I mean, it helped with me singing, but he was so quick. He was like, oh, well, you know this. And I was like, no, I don't know it. I can't just watch your fingers. And like, and right. I felt so frustrated that I just couldn't get it on the first try. So, but I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're singing. Yes. Um, I, I, again, you know, we, we we are very fortunate on the Costa del Sol to provide a home to Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, um, and, and various other, you know, well well known singers, you know. Yes. Uh, and, and and that's what they do. And, yeah. And you know, you, you'll have some some other entertainers, uh, singers who will do. I don't know. Um, kind of folk music or, or whatever. What, what, what would you say is, is your genre or your chosen genre in, in singing? Um, I think when I was in Copenhagen, we did the musical cabaret. Um, and then after that, I continue with a few of the girls to do Kit Kat shows, which was very like showgirls, jazzy right. vibes, um, yes. musical theater, jazzy vibes. And I think that's like, what I love to do because it's very you still do a little bit of dance stuff with it and you still get to be a little bit like cheeky and stuff and the the voice for the jazzy more musical stuff the lower things is very much what I enjoy doing what I think I'm good at doing so yeah yeah but because you you have got a very rich voice yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah, so you you're not thinking of doing the double act. But we we also have Elvis down here. Oh yeah. Yeah. El, 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 oh, I've seen El, him. I think. Yeah. El, Elvis lives just a couple of kilometers down the road from us here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 It, it it's it's interesting. I I mean I'm 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 joking about. It. I mean I I I have met. When I say I met Elvis and Frank Sinatra <laughs> and that, I, I'm talking about the, um, the the people who who entertain as as these artists down here. Yeah. Um. And, and you know, what do you prefer? Do you do you want to just sound like Antonia Stanke, or yes. do you want to sound like someone else? I never want to sound like anyone else. I think I take inspiration from other people. I think you have to because you can never be the best in the room. I think that's yeah, very arrogant to think, and I never think that of myself but I think you can take inspiration and you can take you know little stuff that other singers do that you like and maybe tweak that into your things but I will never want to sound like anyone else because I always want to be my own individual yeah and and and, and you know what happens but when when people say you know oh we've got Frank Sinatra on tonight down, down at, down at the, the, the the local uh, oh. nightclub or whatever you know people go in and, and and they're going uh that didn't sound like him no, no, no. The, 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 the guy. And it's a lot to live up to, right? And, and the guy might have a good voice and might sing yeah. really well, but people go away thinking, "No, I didn't sound like him." No, you know. So I, 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 and I nobody could, could. Yeah. No, no. Um, but but yeah, I, I, I think developing your 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 own brand, your own identity, is is probably a much better way forward, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's also more interesting for people to see. I mean, at least for me, I think, like you said, there are so many that does impersonators of, of others. And I think when we've seen that so much, isn't it more fun to see something you've never seen before, whether you sure. like it or not? Then, yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, for, for, for me, um, I, I think something that is original is, yeah. um, uh, I think, more appealing. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So who, who who musically have been the biggest influences? Do you think on on your uh, your developing into a singer? 
Um, well, I loved, I mean, I grew up with a lot of jazz in my household with my mom and dad. Um, so I like Nora Jones and Josh Stone and a lot of those. Um, but I also grew up in the pop world. So I loved like Christina Aguilera growing up and the big raunchy voices. Right. And then I came into musical theater and discovered a lot of singers there and discovered I loved a lot of the boys songs, which was also very hard because I could never do those songs. Right. You know? But um, yeah, I've had a lot and I think it's very difficult to just stick to one genre or one type of singing or one person singing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my wife and I have been to events down here from time to time and, uh, you know, there have been entertainers there. And and I remember one event that we went to and, and this guy was singing songs from the musicals. Yeah. And I tell you what, he was bloody good. Yeah. He was right. He was really good. And, and you know, it, it, it's different. I think when you're listening to songs from the musicals, you, you remember them in a different way from just a pop song that's been on the radio 150 times, you know? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, that, that, that was probably, you know, we, we, we've listened to a lot of very good entertainers, very good singers, mm. um, but that's probably one that I remember more. Yeah. Because it was just different, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I fully get that. Yeah. Uh, how how easy do you think it is? Um, I, I know this is very early days for you, Antonia, but uh, you know, to to actually make a living from this, because I've known people who have been in the entertainment industry. I've known actors, and uh, you know, it, it was either feast or famine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how how yeah. easy do you think it's going to be to make a living down here from from uh, you know your your, your varied uh, aspects of uh, of the arts world? I think it's obviously hard. I mean, I chose this industry, so I know from from years of it that it is difficult to to do it. Um, and it is it's never like even if you have a job, it's not a long term job. It's sure. very difficult to get that. So you always have to start over again. Um, but I think for the summer season, at least if you can get a job here, it should be okay. After that, I know it gets trickier because there's not so much live music. But again, I've always just had that in my head that's like, well, you just have to have one person say yes. You just have to have one person that believes in you and one job that agrees to take you. Yeah. So if you can do that and if you can get somewhere, then hopefully you can make enough money. But Man, a lot of the time, I think you also have to have a job on the side or something, you know, sure. to support that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? An awful lot of people and, and not just people who work in the entertainment sector, an awful lot of people have to have jobs on the side down here. Yeah. Um, because, uh, as I say, um, work sometimes for some people, especially when you're self-employed and not working for someone else, mm -hmm. uh, it, it can be feast or famine. That, yeah. that, that there's so much that you're, you're reluctant to turn it down in case they never come back to you again. Yeah. Um, but you don't know how you're going to fit it all in or like, you know, you, you're sort of knocking on people's doors going, hello, I'm still here. Yeah, please <laughs> hire me. Yeah. 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 But it was the same in Copenhagen. I mean, I was lucky to do a lot of performing for myself, but I was, still had to have the ballet teacher job, which was also creative, which was good. But I mean, that was the main income for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. So do, do you fancy teaching ballet down here? Mm, maybe at some point. Maybe right now I'm like, I'm a little balleted out um, right. from, from a lot of that. Uh, I do love it. I do love dancing. But I think teaching has to take a little step back before I start that over again. Yeah, and, and, and let's be honest, you know, um, when, when people move down here, they find it very hard for the first spell, whether it's weeks or months, not yeah. to feel like a tourist. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's very, yeah, yeah, I have to get you, I mean, I've been here so many years, but definitely now that I've been here for a longer period, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm here now, I'm living here. I have to sort of think of myself as someone who actually lives here. Yeah, but but everything's new and you want to also enjoy it. You know, you you, you want to enjoy the sun, you want to enjoy the beach, yeah. Um, you, you, you know, there is this feeling like, oh, you know, this is great. And, and you just want to have a, a bit of fun. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. and, and then, you know, gradually that, that begins to sort of common sense kicks in, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like it's not a fairy tale. I have to earn money. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um, now, a, a producer in, um, in France, uh, Mr. Halewood, he has said, if you've got any demos, I'll, I'll, I'll put you in contact with him, send them on to him. And he's got contact with, with, with some uh, producers. So, um, you know, you never yeah. know. Yeah, great. Yeah. So yeah. Do, do, do you have your first gigs um, lined up yet, Antonia? Hopefully, yes. There is a new place opening and um, I've been asked to do a couple of nights there a month. So hopefully I can be there and uh, right. do some singing there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think Mr. Well, Hale would... Name was, right? Well, Bill knows this, don't you, Bill? But uh, one of our co-directors who's come on board is the drummer from Simple Minds, Mel Gaynor. Wow, okay. So, and I'm, I'm in touch with him most days, So, uh, and he's obviously always looking for new talent to, to work with. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you send me over your demos, then I can, I've got, we've got promotion companies that uh, will be interested in uh, promoting you. Well, That's also... amazing! Thank you so much. Welcome, you're welcome. If you got, yeah. if you got talent, girl, it's, you know everyone needs to hear it. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I hope so. Definitely, we get you in front. We get you involved with Mel as well, and uh, yeah. it opens an awful lot of doors, doesn't it? So, yeah. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Antonia, I, I know we only met briefly on the street a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you're having coffee with your mum. Yeah. But it's been absolutely delightful talking to you today. You too. Thank you so much for having me. And, uh, you know, we, we really wish you all the very, very best. Um, so I say, it, it, it's not an easy, um, it's not an easy industry to, to, to break into. And it's not always the best people that make it in the industry. It's a strange one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been lovely speaking to you. And, and we you. really wish you all the very, very best in the future. And no doubt we'll bump into each other in, in the village. Oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> okay, take care. Thanks to everyone who's been listening in today. I'll be back next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.